From my point of view, um, I'd put it simply that good design is appropriate design. You know, there are certain times when it has to be functional. It's got to just do the job. What it looks like is secondary. Um, but as you move into a more consumer orientated market and the people that are buying it are more interested in aesthetics. And so you can't say one is right and another one is wrong. Well, it's balanced again, isn't it? it we have the, the totally functional parts which um, have just got to function and there's no two ways about that. The aesthetic side is the encouragement and the, uh, the reinforcement that the, the, all the stakeholders in a medical device are going to be uh, requiring, you know, the, there's, and the, the requirements are, are so varied from the, the guy, the NHS purchaser, who has a very different requirement from perhaps the guy who's going to pick up the sharps disposal bin at the end. But there's also, does that give us um, constraints? For I mean, say, if we design for a theatre piece equipment, it's the function of electronics, the function of the design is very different to the, what I would say, portable me um, medical electronics, where the design, the usability and the electronics are almost secondary because we've got to fit it into a final function. I do see uh, a transition occurring in medical devices and equipment, particularly in the area of electronics, where um, it's now being... Uh, developed into more sophisticated packages to allow people to use things at home and so consequently you're taking it away from the NHS and the environment where it's used by specialists and experts and you're now putting it in the hands of people who are amateurs and inquisitive and um, they're a target group we call the worried well. The design has to be able to address those issues and design things which are going to be um, reassuring and, and satisfying to use. Mm. Um, I think that's from an electronics point of view, that's where we look to your guys, because that's the, the spec of the, the front end and how the user interacts with the device. From our point of view, that's just one of the functions within the complete medical device. We certainly find um, certain areas of medical device development uh, restrictive because of the uh, conditions and, and accessibility that we've got available to us to talk directly with patients about the products that they use. I do think there's a certain amount of paranoia in this country about medical records and information and secrecy, uh, which is just ridiculous in this day and age because people um, at the opposite end of the scale are signing up to websites like Patients Like Me and they're sharing all their intimate secrets about the way the drugs are reacting with them, the kind of symptoms they're ex experiencing, and they're willing and happy to share. Um, and, and it's actually kind of that peer group that gives them reassurance and, and peace of mind. So I think we need to rethink those things, those areas, really. We could certainly benefit from a bit more openness. Do you think that would change with generation, the younger generation come up that are more technology savvy? Absolutely. I mean, they're so used to uh, sharing information and, you know, we were talking earlier about texting and, uh, and blogging and things like that. I mean, that's, that's going to be commonplace. That's what they're used to. But it's legislation that's stopping it, isn't it? It's, it is, It's yes. not the individuals, the patients. Patient groups are very keen to get good technology. And it's great working with patient groups where you can because they know exactly what they want most of the time and they know how they want it delivered. And, you know, if you get, you get sort of expert patients who are extremely knowledgeable about, about their condition, who can, you know, very powerful influences on the, on the development, certainly of the front end at least. The best insights as the inspiration for innovation, from our point of view, certainly come from watching what people do because there's a huge difference between what they say they do and what they actually do. You can sit down with them and do a focus group and explore and discuss things and then they go away and do something completely different. And they're not always aware of what it is they actually do. So observational techniques, certainly in the consumer product market, and increasingly more, I think, would be beneficial in the medical product market, would lead to much better products as a result. And breaking habits that have been developing over years on, say, drug delivery devices, people just don't know how to handle, or they have been taught, but They've either changed their technique over many years or they've forgotten and you have to reinforce that or make it impossible for them to, to uh, self-administer in any other way than, than what is the right way. But that also comes back to the medical device directive in terms of, from yeah. our point of view, it's delivering in the right quantity, right, it's the reliability, it's the um, consistency in delivery, it's the safe, it's basically all risk mitigation from, electro and from a design point of view. Sure, yeah. 
I, and I think it's very important, um, I, we jokingly in our office say that you should never underestimate the ability of the patient to get it wrong. Um, and you know, the fact that you legislate and say you must do this doesn't mean to say people will. You know, what we should do and what we do do are completely different. And I think, again, if you can only um, try to get to grips with and understand what it is they think they're doing, because nobody sets out to deliberately do it wrong, um, then obviously you can make things uh, more intuitive and, and easier for them. Because it, if possible, you make it more like the process they would want to have if they could.